Okay, I think we are finally set up. Good morning, everyone. Welcome to Marana Insights. We are happy to have you here this morning. Um, hopefully everyone enjoyed the rain that we got or that you got rain. We didn't actually get rain out here in um, Marana. But anyway, we are glad to have you here. Um, and I'm gonna introduce Jenny Hoffman who is with Imagine Realty, who is going to be um, our moderator today. So welcome, Jenny. Thanks for joining us again. Yes, thank you. It's so great to be here, even though we're all remote. So I hope everybody's enjoying listening because there's going to be lots of great information coming forward from our two speakers. And we'll move right into our first speaker, um, Kurt Woody, Economic Development and Tourism Director for the town of Marana, and he's going to give us an update on the new building permits and new business licenses and all of the economic development stuff. Take it away, Kurt. Well, good morning, everyone. You know the, you know the uh, routine every month, we start off with the residential permitting uh, for the first three months of the year and uh, including April's or including March's numbers. As you can see, another strong month for us, January at 99 permits, February at 100 permits, and now for March, 77 permits. And you can see from the three sectors within the town, we've got a nice balance of where those home permits are coming from. Northwest Marana, a very strong month with 36 permits. It's, it's really gaining a lot of traction up here. And other subdivisions are taking notice. It's not just Gladden Farms up in Northwest Marana. There are probably three other subdivisions that have now come into the office with their plans and they'd like to get in on this action as well. So a lot of robust activity on the residential side. A pretty short report from the commercial industrial side, uh, mainly just an update from companies that I've mentioned in the past. Roche broke ground last week on Tangerine Road. They're building their second 60,000 square foot facility right adjacent to the one that they have. And I've mentioned before, it's 160 employees in the high-tech manufacturing world. This is not going to be a distribution center like the one adjacent to it. Uh, this is in the bio fields. So they will do manufacturing out of this facility. So a great product to have for us in Northwest Marana. Uh, other projects are still moving forward like Loop Dealership, uh, Amazon down at um, Ina and Silver Bell area. Uh, those are all still moving forward as well. Multifamily is very strong. We've got about five or six multifamily projects in the hopper right now as well. And they're all just about ready to break ground. So uh, hang on, it's gonna be, uh, gonna be a wild ride for 2021. Other than that, there's not much more to update you on. If there's any questions, happy to field those a little bit later or now. Okay, thank you so much, Kurt. Um, again, it's so encouraging to see things moving forward and building continuing. Um, and one question I have, if I don't know if you've heard any feedback from some of the developers and all that about the cost of supplies and availability of labor. Labor. I know that huge, that's been an issue from people I've talked to. Yeah, labor is a huge issue right now. And that's, that's part of the reason that construction costs are escalating right now, materials as well. It's, uh, Labor, labor shortage is a real problem for the construction world, whether it's in the residential or the commercial side. So yeah, it's, it's slowing projects down for sure. Okay, all right, well, thank you so much. Um, so moving on to our next speaker, Jim Conroy, who's the director for Parks and Recreation for the town of Marana, and he's gonna be giving us an update on all the programs within the town. So you. it's all yours, Jim. Thank you, Jenny. Did the PowerPoint pop up on your end there? It did. Okay, great. Okay. Well, good morning, everybody. Uh, excited to be here. Um, we have a, a lot going on in the Marana Park and Recreation Department as we're coming out of COVID. It's been a, um, although through COVID, we've, um, we have championed a lot of programs and we've been able to keep people in activities. And I'm going to talk a little bit about that. But uh, right out of the gate, um, I just want to share with you that uh, this first slide, our summer programs are online and registration classes are filling up at a pretty good pace. So uh, members from the chamber who I will talk to frequently are realtors. And this is an area that they're always interested in because they want to share it uh, with new buyers. You know, what type of programs they can get in or they can get the kids 
registered for. So I wanted to get that out there to you that uh, you can go online and start looking at those classes. And um, we feel pretty good about the program. Very diverse as far as programs for kids, programs for adults, programs for seniors, um, and also good diversity in programming, you know, from really high energy programs to visual arts with painting classes and that type of thing. And, and, I, and we always put a big emphasis on exercise. So, um, and then the other area that's really taken off in the last month is our splash pads. We open, uh, we have two splash pads. The visitation at both splash pads uh, is pretty significant. Uh, we opened the uh, first week of April and, you know, we've already seen hundreds and hundreds of people at our two splash pads. And the next slide is the location. So we have a splash pad. It's all free. It's all free. So this is great for young families with, with little ones. Um, frequently we'll, we'll meet young families at a splash pad, uh, particularly uh, the one up at uh, Heritage, uh, at Heritage River Park. Uh, near Gladden Farms, where a new family has moved in, and uh, you know they've discovered this great asset across the street that they can take the little ones over there and get them tired for a few hours. Uh, the other location for a splash pad is at Crossroads District Park, down in the Connell Ranch area. Also heavily heavily attended. Um, and thing we're really proud about with the splash pads is that they're open from nine in the morning to seven at night. So we're open 10 hours a day, seven days a week. So 70 hours a week at two locations. And we do that for seven months. Uh, we open in early April and we don't close until mid-October. So we see thousands and thousands of visitors throughout the year at those two locations. But those two, those two facilities, and during COVID, we kept those facilities open. Uh, we are using COVID protocol. Uh, we've had a lot of good behavior. Uh, you know, people that we find come to the splash pad, they, they stay within their family unit. Uh, but we did program those splash pads during COVID and uh, the result was good. And so far this year, same thing. Uh, we're asking people to keep social distancing, but they're still coming out and they're enjoying the, the splash pad. So I wanted to share that with you. Uh, our pool, our Marana pool in Orme Harm Park in North Marana will be open on Memorial Day weekend and will be open through Labor Day. And we'll be offering all the traditional programs, uh, swim team, as well as swim lessons. And swim lessons, um, you know, are always awesome every year because obviously, you know, part of our values as a department is we want kids to be able to learn how to swim for free at their local swimming pool. So those classes will be filling up quickly too, but we'll be open up more Memorial Day weekend, which is also kind of right around the corner for our, our major pool. Uh, our fields are active, um, and I, I use Little League as the example. This is another th this is another area with new people moving to town. They always want to know about the different sport activities that are happening. But we have Marana Little League uh, in North Marana, and then we have uh, Continental Ranch Little League in Continental Ranch. And between those two leagues, we have over 800 families that are registered, and they're out at the ballpark uh, six days a week. They're not out there on Sundays. But uh, fields are active. Uh, visitation in the park when the leagues are rolling is, is obviously pretty high. Um, and this is just one sport, but um, annual Little League in Marana is a, uh, is a great community event. So when you see the kids out there and you're in that area, um, stop by and, and take a look. It's very entertaining and the two leagues do a great job. Special events, uh, got a big event this weekend called the Marana Meltdown. Uh, here again, we're starting to do our special events again, coming out of COVID. Uh, this is a fitness event. This is a time trial mountain bike event and at our, um, at our Tortolita Preserve. It's a nine mile loop that participants are timed in. You can do one loop or two loops. Um, but this uh, outdoor recreation in Marana continues to be extremely popular. And uh, for these type of events, we get a very good registration. I also want to put out there, uh, I wanna thank Audra. Part of the registration includes a free breakfast and uh, Copper Creek Cookies, a member of the chamber is providing breakfast for our event this Saturday morning. The event starts at 6 a.m. and will go till about noon. 
but you know it's always great and we try to do this as much as we can when we're doing an event or we have a program um you know that one of the businesses uh, in the chamber can jump in and maybe have an opportunity for a few sales you know um and that really worked out well audra for this event so thank you very much they were awesome too when we contacted them the following weekend we have uh one of our uh, annual traditional events very popular uh, our Mother's Day run. Now this will be in um, at Crossroads Park. Um, this is a very popular event. Traditionally, we'll get 250 to 300 registered. Uh, in COVID, I'm expecting comparable numbers. However, we're going to do things a little different. We'll be uh, having people uh, taking off in groups. So there might be a group of 20 people at a time, that type of thing. There again, we're still trying to be aware and thoughtful as far as uh is how we're running our events but the file as i said this is the following saturday may 8th at crossroads and we are anticipating a, a strong registration i want to share with you some of the activities that during COVID have just really taken off and uh here again you know with local businesses this is where people uh will go to different shops and maybe get seeds or plants or that type of thing but our community garden at heritage river park it's one of those activities during COVID that just has kind of skyrocketed in, in participation. Uh, a lot of people interested in growing, uh, you know, growing lettuce or growing tomatoes, you know, some type of vegetable. Uh, and participation uh, has probably doubled in that area during COVID. So uh, just another one of those kind of interesting things that has happened. Another program that really championed, uh, that we really championed through COVID was, uh, was painting, the, the, uh, visual art programs. And uh, we also, rather than have them inside, because that was a little challenging with COVID, uh, those of you who are familiar with the, uh, the Heritage River Park, we have kind of a really unique facility there. We have a barn that is indoor, outdoor, and it's very cool. And we have nice lighting there and we do art classes there. And during COVID, this is a group from last Thursday night. Uh, as you can see, this was a, a teen group. Uh, and here again, you know, folks were wearing masks and so forth. But all during COVID, these classes have sold out. Uh, and it's been an activity that week after week, registration is strong and a lot of enthusiasm. We do teen painting classes, we adult, do adult painting classes, but uh, another, another area that has, has really taken off during COVID. And of course, coming out of COVID, you know, those are programs that will continue to go strong. Indoor classes, I get a lot of questions about this. Uh, when are we gonna start to do the indoor classes? We started. Uh, this is a karate class. This is a youth karate class. And if you can see on the slide, the markings on the ground, okay, that's for social, spacing so uh, all the kids in the class and that's the instructor in the back and um, he's like a fourth degree black belt great instructor uh, this is a long time Rana park and recreation program uh, but i shared this with you because i did want to show you we are doing the indoor activities now uh, but we are there again you know with this the marks on the ground we're keeping good social spacing and they're going really well and here again uh, we see good behavior from folks that are attending our programs. Everybody has been you know, really cooperative and in compliance. Another area during COVID that has, uh, has been very popular, it was popular before COVID, but is our, uh, and I just wanna bring this to your attention because it's become such a popular location for outdoor recreation. And that's the uh, real preserve observation deck. Um, we're starting to uh, have year round water, CMID water, we work with CMID and they've been very, very good to work with, but we're filling up the lake to keep it full year round. Uh, this is number three in the uh, Southern Arizona for bird watching. 244 bird species have been identified here. Uh, the gentleman who's doing this class, this is a, this is a class about birding. Uh, his name is Dr. Mike Boken and um, he is a, he's a professor at the university and he's done a couple lectures over there and uh, you know the participation from Miranda residents at these classes it's another it's another class that just fills up you know just people interested in bird watching learning a little more about the environment and uh, this facility this observation deck I'm going to give you another shot of it took this this was last Wednesday morning 
Uh, these are three gentlemen who are not professional photographers or anything like that. They're just local residents that have gotten into birding. And uh, you'll see this almost uh, about any morning around seven o'clock. You know, you'll see a group of people who are out there who are bird wise. And you can see behind them, you know, that the lake is starting to fill up. But um, really nice observation deck, uh, great place to go to. You can, it's right on the loop. So a lot of people like to go for a walk or a, a run or a bike ride. And then it's just a nice quiet space to kind of look, look at wildlife and that type of thing. And, and that's what those gentlemen are doing. As I said, that was just like last Wednesday morning, they were there, took a shot, but you can see that about any morning. Next slide is, um, this was during the winter. This was during COVID. Um, this is one of our uh, bird watching classes, very popular, super popular. Um, and that's the observation deck there again, just kind of give you a, a sense of uh, capacity, the amount of people that can get on that deck and, um, you know, enjoy, enjoy that space. Outdoor recreation, as I mentioned, uh, continues to be very robust. Uh, our guided, uh, hikes up in the Tortolitas are continuing to fill up regularly. Uh, with great feedback from the folks that take it. Uh, our, our guides, who are our staff, uh, usually give a good uh, overview of the ve vegetation, fauna and flora in the area, as well as some of the um, Native American ancient drawings with the petroglyphs and so forth, and really knowledgeable. And uh, we get great feedback on the guided hikes. Uh, horse camp, you know, is another, is another very popular program for us. Um, you know, uh, with the great heritage in Marana with ranching and so forth. Uh, you know, we really are um, uh, very strong in offering uh, the horse camp and encouraging equestrian activities in our trail system. And then mountain biking. Uh, mountain biking continues to be, as I mentioned, we have the event this weekend. Uh, mountain biking is extremely popular in Marana at the Tor at the Tortolita Preserve. Um, you know, last year we had about 8,000 mountain bikers uh, on a counter that we have on that trail, use that trail. So outdoor recreation is in full swing. And there again, uh, these are programs that you can go uh, on our website and sign up for. Uh, horse camp fills up immediately. And in, a in the horse camp program, children are, are taught the do's and don'ts about uh, saddling a horse and really learn the basics. And oftentimes, you know, it really sparks that kind of lifetime love of working with horses and doing equestrian activities. Um, other programs uh, or other facilities that we've seen just unbelievable exponentially, not just locally, but nationally as park and rec professionals, uh, our, our path system. Um, you know, along the Santa Cruz, just north of Cortero, on the west bank of the Santa Cruz, on July, or rather on January 1st, we put in an electronic counter. We want to get an idea, what type of usage are we really having on the loop system? Well, just, we're averaging 15,000 people, passerbys per month on the west bank, on the loop system, uh, between basically Cortero and Aver Valley. So we've had 60,000 people that have passed by our counter in a four month period. Um, it's like uh, 59,994. I mean, li literally it was just, just, just shy of 60,000 passerbys. Um, we saw good activity on the loop for fitness uh, with cycling and walking. As you can see, uh, this is one of our walking events. Uh, but with joggers and inline skating, uh, you name it, as far as what you can do in a path, you'll see it out there in the loop. But we really didn't realize that we were hitting those kind of numbers until we put the counter in. So uh, that helps us. Uh, it also helps us justify, you know, maintenance, uh, why we need to keep these paths in good shape, because obviously you want to keep the pavement good. So people, uh, people are going to be safe and they're not going to trip you know, when there's a crack and that type of thing. And our park maintenance staff is very vigilant, but I wanted to share that stat with you of the 60,000 in the first four months. Some projects coming up, um, very excited. This is a, a photograph. This is up in Gladden Farms at Gladden Farms Community Park uh, in North Marana. Uh, you see the light poles here. These are two soccer fields that are being built. And, um, you know, we finished a a master plan this past year, 10-year park and rec master plan, which I'm going to talk a little bit about 
uh, here in a minute. But, you know, one of the areas that we're deficient in is athletic fields uh, with the population increasing uh, like it is. And we are very we're a very active community uh, in both adult sports and both youth sports. Uh, we have very robust participation when when we have our signups. So getting these two soccer fields uh, in North Moran is really going to be a shot in the arm. We'll open in the fall of 2021. Uh, with this project has been under construction for about the last five, six months. It's a big job, uh, but it's going very well. And there again, it's right next to the loop. And I'm going to give you an overhead here so you can see it. I know a lot of you realtors are very familiar with this area. So this is Tangerine Farms Road right out here. This is where the splash pad is, the Heritage Park splash pad, also a very popular site. And the two soccer field and the new, the new Circle K is, is right over here. So here's where the new Circle K is. And the two soccer fields are just to the west of the new Circle K, actually kind of right behind the new Circle K and behind where the um, splash pad is. And then the loop trail that I mentioned earlier, the loop trail that we have that basically pretty much goes from uh, Ina Road up to Sanders will go right by it. So we'll have that bike and fitness activity that will go right past those new fields. So very excited to get these new fields. Another facility, another outdoor recreation facility that we're gonna be opening in the next two weeks is the CAP Trailhead. Now the CAP Trailhead is off of our new Adonis Road, which is located just north of Tangerine and west of, or rather east of I-10. And uh, this basically will be for equestrian as well as mountain bikes. A lot of enthusiasm about this trail opening. What this means is you'll be able to off of the new Adonis Road, pull into this trailhead starting May 15th. So that'd be um, two weeks from Saturday, jump on the CAP trail. And the CAP trail is about 20, 25 feet above the actual canal. So it really is a cool perspective uh, as far as the views that you get. And this will, you can ride north seven miles to Pinal County and then another 10 miles beyond that. So when this trail opens next uh, on the 15th, you'd be able to either on your horse or on your mountain bike, or if you're a heck of a good runner, you could go uh, 17 miles, you could go 17 miles north continuously. And um, Pinal County, who we work very closely with, is getting ready to extend that trail another 40 miles. So next year at this time, you could jump on the trail right here in Marana, and you'd have continuous trail for 57 miles. So what does that mean is it kind of connects to the whole CAP trail. CAP trail is 338 miles, or the CAP rather. The goal of CAP is to have a trail system in basically to cover 300 miles plus of that area. And our, from our area, we're going to be part of a 57 mile segment. So uh, great outdoor recommendity. Um, we're working with a developer right now uh, who's going to be doing the, the Mandarina development right off of Adonis. We're in regular communication with them, and they're very excited about this trail connectivity. Uh, I think you know, a lot of their residents are going to enjoy it. And we're also planning a 23-acre park as part of that development, which would be part of the Mandarina project. And that's moving along. So this this connection on the CAP is very close to opening, two weeks. Other project that is moving along very well, and this is something we hear a lot about. I probably get more questions about this connection. What you're looking at, this is the Santa Cruz, okay? West of I-10, and this is the Loop Trail. This is the Loop Trail uh, that I was talking about a little bit earlier. It's pretty, you know, we have it pretty much on the West Bank, uh, that's the trail that we counted 60,000 people on in the last four months. And we are building, we have 1.8 miles behind Cal Portland Cement. It's the only part of the Loop Trail in Marana that's not connected. Our 100% construction documents are finishing up. Cal Portland's doing some final reviews. We hope to have this project out to bid by sometime in July and under construction in the fall and open next year at this time. And what that will mean is that North Marana, I'm gonna show you a slide of the whole loop here. So this is the whole trail loop system that surrounds, um, that surrounds Tucson. 
And here we are up here in Marana, and we're the farthest point at Sanders Road. And once we have that 1.8 connected, north of Marana from Sanders Road will be connected to 100 miles of a trail system. And that will be done next year at this time. And I don't know if you're aware of this, but in the last uh, three months, the, uh, the, our loop, our loop here in Tucson slash Marana or a valley was voted the number one trail system in the country by USA Today. So uh, pretty cool outdoor recreation amenity. And when we get that Cal Portland connection done, anybody that lives in Gladden Farms, you know, could basically ride their bike downtown. And you'd be surprised the amount of people that live in Continental Ranch who commute to work in downtown Tucson. It's a lot more than people, people think. So it's for recreation, but it also becomes an alternative mode of transportation. Master plan. Um, we did our 10 year park and recreation master plan for the town. It was adopted by mayor and council uh, the first week of February, very exciting project. We worked on it for 18 months. Um, the pictures here, um, it's, I share this photograph with you, this collage, because it really does represent the diversity of the people that we serve. Uh, I mean, to be a good park and recreation department, you have to serve everyone and you have to be on your toes and aggressive about it. And, you know, we work hard and then the adaptive community, um, handicap program, programs for handicapped individuals, um, both young and adults, obviously the visual arts with the painting classes I talked about, our senior citizens, very important to us. We do a lot of senior programming, our outdoor recreation, that's a guided uh, hike right there. Adult sports, very popular. And youth sports in Marana is huge. Soccer alone, we have 6,000 kids registered in soccer uh, in Northwest, basically Northwest Tucson, which includes Marana and Oro Valley. And then, of course, our equestrian activities with our horse camp. So, you know, when we went into the master plan uh, project, uh, we wanted to be as I talk about those populations, we serve as inclusive as possible. But I know our realtors are very dialed into this. But you know, what's you know, what do we need to do as a park and recreation department? Well, we need to enhance the quality of life for our citizens. If it's for seniors or if it's for this little guy running with the football, uh, support economic vitality. Um, you know, we want just like um, you know, Copper Creek Cookies is is working on an event with us this weekend. Or you buy a house, you know, you want to buy a house in a community that you're going to have, uh, you know, good schools and good parks and programs for the kids to participate in, you know, and it's, a, it's amazing the amount of people that we hear from who live, uh, particularly in the Dub Mountain area, who bought a home to be close to a trail that they can jump on a mountain bike a couple of days a week, or, you know, um, or hike you know, because they're retired and those are activities that they enjoy. So they buy their home to be close to these, you know, really pretty extraordinary outdoor recreation amenities. And of course, in Continental Ranch, with the loop system through it, same thing. I mean, it's, it's outstanding accessibility to outdoor recreation. And develop a sense of community. Um, you know, parks, uh, parks develop a sense of community. Uh, community center, our center in, in uh, Orome Harm Park. It brings people together. That was a heartbreaking, I think the toughest thing during COVID for us was our seniors not being able to come to the center because we get about 45 to 65 seniors a day that come to our center in Orme and during COVID they couldn't come. Now they're coming back again, but that socialization, that sense of community coming together. It's a big part of what we do as a park and rec community, just like coming together to be part of your athletic team and promote health and wellness is obviously a, you know, a bedrock of what we do. So we had a, to do the plan and to have a successful park and recreation master plan, if you can't demonstrate that you've reached thousands of people, in my opinion, you haven't, you haven't done your job. So job one was to get out there very aggressively and promote the master plan. And I won't go through every, every category here, but I have a breakdown here that rolls up to about 6,000 contacts that we documented uh, feedback from our residents. And we started with a blank canvas. We didn't tell our residents in the park master plan what they needed. We asked them, what do you need? So it was really a blank canvas. And we listened to the community uh, to tell us what they want. And what was really 
very gratifying is, is park and rec professionals. You know, most of the things that we saw as priorities in the community were right in sync with what our, our community told us. So we had wonderful public engagement as part of that process. And it was really diverse. Um, I also want to share with you. So this was our advisory committee that kind of, they were our compass. They were our North. They kept us straight during the 18 months. It was a 16 person committee that we would go back and say, okay, you know, we've talked to 4,000 people. This is the feedback. What do you think? Now, this was your, like the sport leagues, the presidents of the sport leagues, like the person that oversees the little league with 500 kids in it, or the soccer club with multiple hundreds of kids in it, or the person who's the president of your senior citizen club. Those were, this was the group that basically from hiking clubs to hiking organizations, ran a school district. We had, we had two principals and we had Dan, Dan Cortorno, as many of you know, the chief financial officer, Dan was on it as well. So we had Marana school district and of course school principals we worked very closely with, senior citizen representatives. And then of course we had trail enthusiasts, uh, bird watchers. So from really heavy duty uh, sport activity people to people who enjoy bird watching and pretty much everything in between. So it was well represented. And what did they tell us? So where we've ended, you know, where we, where we have ended up um, at the conclusion of the, of, the, uh, of the master plan is the community told us these were the big takeaways. Community told us that we need, we're very deficient in good quality interior recreation space. We need a recreation center. I mean, we need a large, we're a community now, 50,000 plus people. And the community said that, you know, we really, we, we, we need a good indoor rec center. We heard that loud and clear. They also said that in the general plan, which of course was done, you know, right before we did our master plan. So mayor and council, um, as you know, our mayor and council is, uh, we got great leadership. Uh, and they have given us direction to start doing some research to pursue the center. And we're doing some due diligence on uh, selecting a site and that type of thing to bring back uh, to mayor and council this June to talk about uh, where such a facility could go. So that conversation has, has started. The other thing that the community told us is a year round aquatic center. Our pool in uh, North Marana, it rocks for the summer when we're open. Um, and, and there again, senior, we have a competitive swim team with the kids, very popular, but then we have our aqua aerobics, which is senior citizens that do their exercise. And those will have 50, we'll have 50 seniors in the pool, uh, any morning of the week at the pool and people get very disappointed come, uh, basically, um, uh, Labor Day weekend, we have to close. I mean, we really are a community that people are talented. We want a year round swimming pool. So that was another big one. And then more of what we have, you know, more of the larger parks, the, the Ora Mays and the Crossroads Park, the 50 plus acre parks and sports complexes. And we're looking at that as well, where we have a park with multiple, multiple fields. And it's a very efficient thing to do is to have four to six fields at one location. Uh, and trail system. People love the loop system. They love the trails and the tortillitas. Uh, uh, they really encouraged us, you know, we keep building it just like the Cal Portland project. You know, people want to see that punch through. So North Moran is connected to the whole loop. And then our preserves, um, which is the El Rio preserve. I showed you earlier for bird watching and the tortillita preserve. Uh, very popular. Continue to work in those areas and promote those programs. And then just High marks for what we did. We really got nice feedback from our from the folks that use our programs, but they said we want more of it. You know, we want higher volume activities. So, in conclusion, um, here are a couple things that I just want to share with you: how you can stay in touch with us and what we're doing. Um, every 14 days, we send out a notify me e blast. And I was talking to Audra and Jenny uh, earlier before the meeting, and you know, a couple of years ago, we had about 2,500 people on this notify me. And as of today, we have about 5,200. So we've doubled the amount of people we send the e-blast to. But you can get on our e-blast list. In fact, there's a lot of chamber members who are on it by just going to our Marana Park and Recreation website, sign up for it. And every 14 days, you'll get a, an update on, you know, the soccer fields being built or, you know, new programs or events that are being offered. And then the other thing is the app. 
Uh, we have a park and recreation app that you can go to the app store and download. And that's also been very well received by the community and gotten great feedback from it, from our residents. So um, lots, lots of positive things happening in Marana Park and Recreation. And I appreciate uh, Jenny and Audra giving me the opportunity to talk to you a little bit, bit this morning. And um, any questions, uh, Audra, however you and Jenny want to do, but uh, that pretty much concludes my presentation. Okay. Yeah, Audra, I didn't really see any questions on the Facebook Live, but I actually have one. Um, and again, because I have horses myself and I was really you know, glad to see that the equestrian stuff is really good. The Heritage Arena, is that anything that Parks and Recreation is involved with there by the middle school? We're not. That, okay. that, that is separate. But Jenny, if you want to contact me offline, I can get you contact information for that. Okay. Well, and, and again, kind of tying into that with adding on more Parks and Recreation facilities, is there anything in the works for having, you know, like a multi-use equestrian arena for, you know, like rodeo type events, horse shows, things for groups to get together and do rides, stuff like that? We're not planning a facility um, in that regard. However, what we are doing, like with the opening of the CAP trail, that trail is uh, all the, all the, um, all our gate system, our parking lot, that facility is set up for truck and trailer in a location that people can go to and be on a good equestrian trail. So in trailheads, we're, we're doing that. As far as building an arena, um, that, uh, that is really private sector is stepping in more in that regard. Okay. Uh, and I think on our end in the public sector is that uh, we need to make sure that our trail systems do a good job of accommodating people's truck and trailer and accommodating them in the trail system period. So they have good places to ride. Okay, great, that, excellent, thank you. So Audra, is there anything more you wanted to? Yeah, well, I don't see any other questions, but um, please, please feel free to um, reach out to Parks and Rec if you do have questions. Um, I know Jim was a little modest, but um, Parks and Rec does a wonderful job. Our parks are always nice. The, um, the staff is always great to work with. And I know that they always are winning awards nationally, locally um, for individual staff and then as a um, department together too. So I just wanted to mention that, that we do have award-winning um, Parks and Rec department here. And um, I did have one question. Um, with the, the scarce of water and the drought that we're in and talking about building a new pool and um, putting in some more parks, I know that Parks and Rec always has a plan with mm -hmm. making sure that we're very conservative with water. What is, what is some of that that, that maybe the, the public doesn't know about? No, I think that's a great question. And you know, with CMID, uh, here, and because it's not potable water, it's not drinking water, uh, we connect CMID water to every park that we can to irrigate, so that we're not irrigating anywhere where we can have uh, non-drinking non water to irrigate, that's what we do, and that's, we're aggressive about that, so that connection is being made all the time, and, and I am going to, a, a shout out to CMID, uh, absolute pleasure to work with. Um, what is CMID? Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, <laughs> Portero Marana Water District. Um, outstanding folks to work with. And, you know, uh, that's a great question too, Audra, because when we started to fill the El Rio Preserve, we got that question. You know, is this Marana water? Is this Tucson water? No, this is not drink. This is not potable water. This is not drinking water. This is irrigation water. This is CMID water. And we haven't gotten one complaint about that. In fact, people thought it was uh, a very responsible way to move forward. It's also, um, you know, we become another customer for CMID, which, which supports a, a great company that's been in this community for, you know, what, over 100 years. Um, but that's our game plan, is not to have any portable water used for irrigation or uh, filling a... Um, uh, one of our man-made, so to speak, uh, bodies of water like the real preserve. So we do that pretty aggressively. And, um, and I want to say in the last year, Audra, we have converted three parks 
from Marana Water CMID for that reason to be, you know, environmentally conscious and and use water that's suitable, but not drinking water. Great, thank you for that. Yeah. Anything else, Jenny? Um, no, I just, you know, thank you so much, Jim. It was a great update, really enjoyed it. And I just wanna encourage everybody that's watching and listening, just go out and enjoy these wonderful parks and activities that we have because, you know, coming from back East, we just didn't have this sort of interaction and and I love it. I've been here in Marana for 20 years and it's like by and far my hometown. Great. Well, again, thank you to our guests. Thank you, Jenny. Thank you, Tammy, for joining us. And thank you all your Facebook Live um, visitors. This will live on our Facebook page, excuse me, if you want to go back and um, look at it again. Next month, we will be meeting um, back at the Northwest Fire Training Center and doing a live event, but we will always post this on Facebook too. So um, we want to keep our Facebook friends in, in mind, um, or if you just want to sleep in that morning, but we will be back in person in May, May 26th, I think it is. Yes, May 26th, yes. eight o'clock at Northwest Fire. We'd love to see you. Again, thank you for your time today. Please take care, everyone, um, and remember, shop Marana. Audrey, Jenny, Tammy, thank you very much. Appreciate it. Thank you. Thank Appreciate you. what you do. Thanks. Bye-bye.